So welcome everybody. Uh, it's nice to see you all. Welcome to this shock online workshop on speech to text, text linking social surveys and linguistic infrastructures through speech interviews. Um, just a short introduction about what the shock project is. Is a huge European project that counts 45 partners across all the Union. Uh, it started in January 2019 and will last until April 2022. Um, it's founded through the Horizon 2020 European Union funding for research and innovation. Our role is to create the social sciences and humanities side of the European Open Science Cloud, EOSC by maximizing the usability and reusability of fair data that is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, if you're interested, feel free to check out on our website more information. Um, the speakers today will be Judith Copes, postdoctoral researcher from the Generation and Gender Program in NIDI, Groningen, Jori Smulder, uh, LISC coordinator and researcher from the LISC panel, Hank van der Heuvel, a senior researcher for the oral history team in Radboud University in Nijmegen, and me, a junior researcher from European Value Study in Tilburg University. Um, today, after this short introduction, we will have an overview and description of the project by Judith, which will have a presentation on linking social surveys and linguistic infrastructures. Then Joris will describe applying speech to text softwares in the Dutch list panel presentation. Can you hear me? And lastly, Hank will present processing and analyzing audio data with a presentation on linguistic analysis and audio recorded social surveys. After this, we will be divided in breakout rooms where we will be able to address the speakers themselves and we will uh, be able to ask questions and discuss the implications of what we had before. The breakout rooms will be divided automatically, but feel free to change to other breakout rooms if they're not the ones that best fit your interests. And lastly, I know that we are all used to this sort of meetings in this pandemic moment, but it's just better to recall some housekeeping rules. So remember to please keep your microphone muted during each other's presentations. If you have questions, please submit them in the chat and I will address the speakers myself later. And for your knowledge, the presentations will be recorded uh, to be made available together with the slides later. So if you don't want to be recorded, uh, switch off your camera during the presentations. Now we will stop sharing and give the floor to Judith. Thank you, Giovanni. Okay, so in this 10 minutes, I will tell you more about how the col uh, collaboration between two social science infrastructures and a linguistic infrastructure resulted in the development of an innovative project in which we collect voice recordings in a social survey. I will tell you about how this project fits in the Pan-European Open Science Cloud project how the infrastructures in the social science cluster and the humanities cluster can complement each other, how this can then enrich the data that we make available to researchers, and how we have taken the first steps in this direction in the form of an experiment in which we collect voice recordings in a survey setting via the LISP panel. So the European Open Science Cloud is this massive project that was funded by Horizon 2020 to develop a pan-European digital platform. So all in the spirit of open science, the developed platform should encourage sharing and storing of data and tools across all scientific disciplines. A part of the money of the EOS project was given to the Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud Project, so the SHOCK project. The infrastructures within these two research clusters were given a pot of money alongside the assignment to develop this network that allows collaboration and sharing of their tools in order to prepare for a digital future to develop research further and to foster open science. 
So several infrastructures are part of these two clusters, and I put a few on these uh, on the slides. Now, what we see is that within these clusters, there is quite some exchange. For example, a social science researcher who uses data of the generations and gender program is most likely also aware of the type of data that is collected via the European value study. And the same is true within the humanities cluster. However, collaboration between um, these two clusters, it's much rarer. And this is very unfortunate because sharing the tools and the knowledge can result in very interesting projects and developments. The current project is the result of a collaboration between three infrastructures from the social sciences and the humanities cluster, the European Value Study and the Generations and Gender Program provide information about individuals. The EVS focuses on opinions, beliefs and values, and the GGP on topics such as fertility, family and gender. Uh, Clarin, on the other hand, provides collections of texts called linguistic corpora and tools that can be used to analyze these corpora. So the commonality between these infrastructures is that they provide data for researchers to analyze. However, the type of data that they collect and also release is very different. The data provided by the EBS and the GDP is more quantitative in nature. Individuals are asked close questions. Respondents are, for example, asked if they think it's okay for a couple to live together without being married, and then they can choose the answers from a five-point scheme. So the data is therefore very highly structured and also comparable across individuals and across countries. The data is also representative of the populations in these countries. So in contrast, the data provided by Clarin is more qualitative in nature, at least it often is. The data is often unstructured in the sense that it is very complex and very rich. And because of these characteristics of the data, linguists have developed tools that automate the process of cleaning and extracting the information from the data that is relevant for research. So the data that are provided by Clarin are often organized, for example, by language or by source, for example, in an experiment that was conducted in Germany. Okay, so what would happen if we combine the practices of these two disciplines? We use the social science infrastructure to collect the audio recordings, and we use the humanities infrastructure to automate the processing and the analysis of the data. As a hypothetical situation, let's imagine that we had included four extra open-ended questions in the previous round of data collection of the Generations and Gender Program. For example, on the topic of different relationships types, like marriage, unmarried cohabitation, and living about together relationships. And let's imagine that this audio data was transcribed to text by Clarin and the sentiment analysis was performed. So what would this hypothetical situation mean for the data that we as infrastructures could have released to the research community? Now, linguists would have gotten access to 168,000 language inputs that are nationally representative. So this would, would allow them, for example, to examine the same language, but spoken in different countries and also across different regions. It could possibly give them also access to corpora languages and dialects that are less common in the general population. In addition, the linguists would have a access to a wealth of other information of this individual, such as age, socioeconomic status, and general health. A sociologist and demographers would get access to open-ended answers from a very large representative sample of individuals. This will provide additional information on the core topics that they are interested in. And apart from what is answered, they can also use the information on the general sentiment of respondents towards these topics. Moreover, it would provide more information on the person that is responding. How fluent is this person in the language of the survey? Or how engaged are they while they are participating in the survey? So in general, 
This seemingly small addition to the survey of four questions could in fact generate a wealth of information that is useful for linguists as well as social scientists. Now, in order to bring this hypothetical situation closer to reality, we are currently running an experiment in the Netherlands to collect audio recordings in an online survey via the LISP panel. The module consists of five topics, democracy, European Union, trust, marriage, and unmarried cohabitation. And each of these topics combines a closed survey question taken from the EBS or GDP and combines it with a few open-ended questions which allows respondents to elaborate further on the topic. The answer are then recorded and Clarin will use the, the natural language processing tools to transcribe the audio files to text. The data collection has actually already started last Monday, um, so that's all very exciting. Um, 400 respondents of the LISP panel were approached to fill in the module, and out of this, we aim to get a minimum of 50 full responses. So this far, the data collection is going very well, and yesterday, Joris actually let us know that they had already reached the minimum of 50 full responses. Uh, the data will also be made available by the LISP uh, repository at the end of this year. Now, during the rest of the workshop, I hope you can keep this bigger goal of the project in mind and that you use this to think along with us how we can bring this experiment to the next level, but also what other steps should be taken to get closer to the goal of collecting voice recordings in a large pan-European survey like the EBS or GDP. Okay, thank you very much and uh, back to you, Joe. Thank you, Judith. Uh, I see there are no questions in the chat. Does anybody have any question for Judith? Otherwise, uh, I would give directly the floor to Yoris and we keep the discussion for the breakout rooms. Okay. Yoris then. Yes, I will. Start sharing my screen. <laughs> okay, um, I think. Everyone can see the screen uh, now. Um, thank you, uh, Giovanni, for uh, for the introduction. Um, and good morning, everybody. Um, as Judith already uh, indicated, we are currently running a speech-to-text study in the Dutch list panel, asking respondents to verbally elaborate on their point-and-click answers. And in this presentation, I will talk about the challenges and solutions of implementing audio response software in an online panel environment. <clears throat> to first give you some context, I will first tell you something about the LISP panel, and what kind of research it facilitates. The LISP panel, which stands for Longitudinal Internet Studies for the Social Sciences, is a probability-based internet household panel consisting of 7,500 panel members from 5,000 households. The sample is drawn in cooperation with Statistics Netherlands and it is refreshed biannually. The panel was founded in 2007 and it is representative for the Dutch population. Households without internet access are provided with equipment to participate. <clears throat> and each month, panel members fill out several online surveys on a broad range of different topics for which they receive a monetary incentive of two euro 50 for a 10 minute survey, which translates to 15 euros an hour. In addition to an annual field of longitudinal set of core questionnaires on a broad range of topics like health and personality, religion, and many more, the LIST panel also facilitates innovative research projects. A couple of examples of past projects are internet bathroom scales measuring weight and muscle and fat percentage and sending it over the internet to LIS. The smartphone 
uh, uh, projects for time use and travel behavior and accelerometer studies measuring physical activity at 60 hertz and applying pattern recognition through machine learning techniques. But also other experiments on asking respondents to take photos from within the, within the survey software instead of giving text answers and applying text to speech technology, reading out the text on the screen. But the current innovation focuses on making speech to text technology available in the list panel so that respondents can verbally answer questions instead of typing their answers. Well, this is a very interesting way of data collection, of course, in an online survey research environment, since it provides us with potentially much more data to analyze compared to just typing your answers. But there are, of course, several issues to consider. Like what software do you use? Since there are several options to choose from, there are technical issues. The software has to be integrated into the panel software and you have to make sure that the server has enough muscle to be able to handle the server load when possibly hundreds or even more respondents are participating all at once. But also think of privacy and security. Audio files have to be stored, has to have to be stored in a secure place since a voice is considered personal data. And this also brings up the question if and how you can put these files in an open data archive. The audio files will have to be checked for any personal information like names or addresses. And last but not least, the methodological implications, of course. Speech to text will provide much more data and prior data to analyze than just a written text but probably at the cost of representativeness due to selective non-response. <clears throat> so for the current project, uh, we are using software from QuestFox. This is a software as a service tool, which was successfully integrated in the list panel infrastructure. As mentioned on the previous slide, nowadays there are several software solutions to accommodate speech to text, but QuestFox was the first tool we encountered which was secure and easy to integrate uh, in our panel software. It produces files with good audio quality, which is pivotal for the analysis. Privacy and security are, of course, of utmost importance in survey research, but even more so when it comes to projects collecting and storing personal data like audio files. So once these files are collected, they have to be manually checked, which means listening to all of them and all identifiable information like names or addresses are censored. Well, you probably can imagine this is a very time consuming process. And I would be very happy to hear some ideas from you in the discussion, how you think this issue can be tackled. When respondents start a survey on the personal list questionnaire page, they are informed they will be sent to QuestFox over a secure connection. Once they are in the QuestFox environment, they agree to an informed consent tailored to this specific study, and then they fill out the survey. The audio files are not saved at the QuestFox server, but they are sent on the fly to a dedicated secure FTP server at Center Data and the List Panel. This way, we separate the storage of the audio files from the data set. And when when res uh, respondents finish the survey, they are sent back to their personal list page, again over a secure connection, and then the circle is complete. Applying speech to text in an online survey research panel does have its pros and its cons. For instance, it's easier to use more open answers. Most people talk faster than they type. Here you can see the, the amount of words and the amount of letters from an earlier study was higher in the voice condition, but the survey time was the same for the text and the voice condition. Also, it provides you with more information than just textual data, like the tone of a voice and emotions and verbal reasoning skills. On the other hand, 
front side, this comes probably at the cost of representativeness, where selective non-response is a serious issue. Certain people just refuse to participate. And some do not have a microphone or the microphone does not work or function properly. Or certain hardware is not supported like the older Internet Explorer browser and the Apple Safari browser, which unfortunately, unfortunately does not allow the use of a microphone in the browser for now anyway, because this will be solved in a couple of months. So I hope this gives you an impression of the challenges and solutions of implementing speech to text in the list panel and how we manage to collect good quality audio responses in a privacy by design manner. And to complete this story and to complete this picture, I will now show you a short demo of the start of the survey, just a couple of questions, not the whole survey, you don't have the time for that, uh, but then you have an idea of what it, uh, uh, what it looks like. So when they finish at uh, uh, arrive at QuestFox, here's the informed consent, giving more information about the study. Here you, they, uh, we ask them on what device they are, they are filling in the, the, the survey. Let's choose the laptop here. And then we ask them what kind of browser are you using? Let's choose Firefox. And is there a microphone available? Let's click yes. And it's also good to know um, that if, if they click no, if there's no microphone available, and if they don't allow to use the microphone, then they are not screened out of the survey, then they are routed in the text uh, uh, track of the, of the survey. So they can still fill out the complete survey, but not with audio, but just typing their answers. But now, of course, I will show you uh, the, the audio track. Yes, I'm alone, and I give permission to use my microphone in the browser. And here, we're going to check whether the microphone the works. The world is my oyster. And does it work? Yes, the world is my oyster. Works perfectly. And then, I'll give some instructions how to enter the scale. Let's just choose eight. It's a nice number. And here's another one. And then we ask people to elaborate on their previous given answers. They will not see that text. Freedom of speech and voting. Freedom of speech and voting is of course important, at least for me in a democracy. They won't see it, but they see the, the, the green thingy there and then they know uh, their, their recording was, uh, was successful. Well, this is just a short, short uh, demo of the questions. Here's uh, the, the, the Google uh, thing, because they always know better what you like to watch than you do yourself. Uh, well, well, it's the, the end uh, of the presentation. I hope uh, this, uh, this gives you uh, a nice overview of the study, what we did in the list panel. Thank you, Joris, for your presentation. Uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat. So uh, instead of COP, uh, checking audio files for privacy issues, can the transcribed text be checked instead automatically? At least in this way, the audio files may be shortlisted to check them manually. Uh, well, if I understand correctly, and if not, please, uh, the one who, who asks, just, uh, just uh, uh, come to the live, <laughs> uh, just to elaborate. Um, the, the audio files uh, are uh, also transcribed to text in the background. So when people are uh, giving their audio answer in the background, it's also uh, transcribed to text and also saved as an, uh, as an audio file. And yes, uh, I agree. And this, this is the first thing we do, we, we, we check the transcripts, of course, and see if there is any personal information in there. But, well, although transcripts are working pretty well, it's not 100% perfect. So sometimes uh, something 
can be transcribed just a bit different and it can still do some personal information, the actual audio file. So you still have to check, uh, check the files. Thank you. Then we have a second question by Constantine. So have you considered implementing a voice recording tool directly in your survey program? Because redirecting them to a different software might come at the cost of losing respondents through connectivity issues. Yes, yes, this is, is a very valid, uh, valid point. And actually we, uh, we did explore this. Um, and and yes, this also in my presentation, I, I, I know there are several options to implement uh, speech to text, of course. Um, and everything you do at your own uh, uh, environment, uh, you have control over. So it's, of course, that it will, uh, uh, well, you, there will be less drop and drop out of technical issues. Um, this is definitely something to, uh, to further explore. The reason why we used uh, West Fox, uh, to be honest, I, I saw a presentation of uh, the professor uh, also uh, working at the uh, uh, University of Be Berlin, who uh, also was uh, involved with Quest Fox. He gave a presentation at the Gore Conference in 2018, and that just was the start of using this and trying this software. Um, but yeah, I agree. We should definitely also try it on, on our own server side. Yeah. Uh, may May I add another question or or comment? Just um, and thank you very much for, for the presentation. Really interesting and, and cool to see others also working on, on voice recording. Um, just, just because I, I mentioned this is that uh, my colleagues Jan Hoon and I just uploaded an easy to use uh, open source um, JavaScript based voice recording on, on GitHub. You know, uh, might, might be just, it's, it's really easy to, to implement it. We tried it on um, several different uh, survey programs and it's just implementing the HTML um, on, the, on the server side, there is the PHP and the JavaScript uh, implement, but there is almost nothing one needs to adapt. And of course, it's. I think there are two main um, uh, sites and uh, aspects which which um, are necessary to consider when when really using them. Because the first one, as you as you said, of course, um, having all in your uh, own um, environment is is pretty secure. And another nice option is, of course, you have a lot of money. We do not have, but it comes without any cost. Of course, it's, it's open source. Everyone is, is free to use it. And we're, we're really happy to receive feedback, um, whether it works for, for you or not. So uh, if, you, if you like, we can, can chat later on it in the um, breakout room. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, um, let's do that. I'm, I'm very open to this and all for open source software and uh, and, uh, and we like of course experimenting in the list panel. Um, so yeah, that's uh, definitely, uh, I'm definitely interested. Thanks. Uh, thank you for the input, Constantine. Uh, Joris, some other questions are coming along in the chat. So the first is, can you tell more about the quality of the recordings? Well, I think this was mentioned in the presentation. And if the respondents can listen to the answer before uploading them to the servers. Yeah. Um, all valid uh, questions, of course. Well, the quality of the, of the audio files is, is pretty good, actually. It's, it's not, uh, because I'm also I'm not checking, the, also checking the, the, uh, the chat. No, it's not, com not compressed into MP3. It's... Uh, it's actually uh, an, an open uh, open format uh, FLAC uh, uh, format, so this it's it's a lossless audio uh, uh, format, and uh, yeah, the, the the quality is is uh, is, uh, is pretty good. Yeah. yeah, you can just use it with VLC or whatever player that uh, yeah that. Uh, and lastly, will the transcription of the the answer be showed in every question, like in your example? So, if the respondents uh, see errors, they are able to change them. Well, this is an option. Um, this is an option of the of the of that software. 
uh, but in this uh, project, we, we chose not to do so because um, there were some experiments with this before. And of course, it can be useful if people use uh, the, the audio function. Um, they can just uh, um, yeah, add some text if they, if they like. But um, in this situation, we just want to see whether it, it, it works, whether people will uh, talk more, uh, give a, uh, a more uh, extended answer compared to, to typing the text. But it's, it's, an, uh, it's definitely an option to show them, to show them uh, uh, the text and uh, yeah, yeah. we record it if they want. Great. So thanks everybody for the questions. Uh, given that there are no more, I would keep the floor to Hank. Okay, thank you very much, Giovanni. Um, let me increase this. So you should be able to see my screen now and um, in, in full size. Um, I would like to continue this presentation on uh, more uh, the linguistic analysis of audio recorded social surveys um, as we um, uh, are a partner in this project as well um, uh, more from the clarence side of uh, of, of, of um, this project um, i would like to uh, tell you something about what we uh, do about um, um, the audio processing of the files and first of all, indeed, this is also automatic speech recognition in order to obtain uh, transcriptions of the audio material, uh, also in an open source manner, as Constantine was already uh, pointing to. Uh, and I will tell you something about uh, what we have uh, created in the Claren infrastructure in, in uh, this matter. And then I will address some additional acoustic analyses of speech signal, which can be very useful um, because if you have the speech signal, you don't only have the words, but you also have the signal as a whole uh, with everything that comes to it um, with uh, pitch, uh, pitch of tone, uh, uh, loudness, etc. And then once you have the, the transcription, uh, this brings you some text, but the text you can also use for further analysis methods. And also this can be a great uh, increase of uh, um, the information that is inside uh, and what you can get out of a survey. Um, it's not just ticking buttons in the Likert scales, for example, but you have full text which you can explore. So first, this uh, transcription chain, um, you see here um, a, a, a chain of things that, that happen with the audio signal when you want to come uh, to a, a transcription of the, the signal. First of all, you have the interview here, uh, which you have if you, it's only in an in, in analog state, but this is uh, getting more and more seldom and obsolete. Uh, you would first have to trans, uh, convert to a digital signal. But once you have the digital thing, uh, you can get to a transcription. You can, you can do it by, um, by hand uh, immediately without uh, automatic intervention. And you can see this person is not really enjoying it. Um, so it would be much better to do an automatic uh, version of that with automatic speech transcription. But even if you have done that, there are still errors, as also Joris pointed out. Um, it's not perfect. For example, typical names uh, will not be included in the uh, vocabulary of your uh, recognizer. Uh, and also, typically in domain names, maybe can have the same uh, problem. So uh, you might have to uh, check and correct the transcriptions. And once you have done that, you would like to align them again to the uh, audio signal uh, and get, uh, get that done. Uh, but then you have the 100% correctly timed text, and that's nice. And then you can add some metadata to it, and, and you have a nice collection of speech with um, a corresponding transcriptions. So as Joris already told, this is already done in this project with the QuestFox software. But we are, what we are going to do is with our Dutch speech recognizer, we are also uh, will be processing the audio files and just make a comparison as well, because it's interesting to see what can be recognized and what can't and if these recognizers differ in, in, in this respect. So, um, this is the process that, uh, that goes along typically. Um, uh, and then 
um, this uh, transcription chain, which I outlined here, is uh, implemented in the Claren uh, structure. It's called the T-chain. And here you see a link to a, a web portal where you can do all this. Uh, when, when, when you go there, so you have the uh, opportunity to upload your file to do the speech recognition for various languages. Uh, we, we connect to Google Translate transcription services as well, but we have our own recognizers for several languages as well. Uh, once you've done that, you would like to make a manual transcription. This is done in the Octra um, uh, uh, transcription software. And then you can do the word alignment again uh, and look at the phonetic detail and make the expert of the resulting files and all kinds of formats uh, for uh, linguistics, for example, for linguistic people. Uh, Prat is very interesting things, but there are also other many other options of outputting these uh, files. So um, this has been uh, built by our colleagues uh, in at Munich University. And it is free to use uh, within the clearance structure, and you can log into the portal and upload your uh, your uh, audio files and see what happens. Um, so when we have this T chain and would use this material for uh, for speech recognition, um, there are always uh, concerns that we have with the audio quality of the um, uh, material that we get. For example, we do not, do not like a, a speaker overlaps in the material, but uh, for this type of uh, recordings, this will be quite nice uh, because it's uh, just one speaker uh, uh, sitting in front of a laptop. And if we are lucky, uh, he or she uses closed talk microphones, which gives a good quality as well. Can avoid background noise when using such a closed talk microphone and also being in a, in a quiet environment. Uh, it's relevant to articulate normally, but this is not something you can control. Uh, um, uh, sometimes when people know that there is a speech recognizer behind it, they start to articulate very precisely. And that means that the uh, speech recognizer will fail because it expects normal speech. So that's something good to, uh, to remember. And of course, you need a good internet collection, uh, which was already uh, mentioned. Um, once you have um, uh, done this, you, you can consider um, more uh, 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 analysis types for your acoustic uh, signal. Um, um, one notable thing is emotional uh, analysis. We have a, a colleague uh, in Twente, uh, Ki Truong, but for the colleagues with her, uh, who did an excellent paper on this and give you a good idea of uh, what, what you can do further. For example, um, when we look at the two dimensions uh, of arousal and valence, uh, valence being, uh, say, a positive emotion uh, uh, and versus a negative emotion, a speech signal can be used to find out more interesting things. For example, pauses and the low volume of uh, indicators as negative uh, uh, valence. Uh, pitch variation of, uh, in, as indicators of positive valence, but also higher arousal. Um, this is interesting um, additional material that may come uh, uh, when you have the audio signal at hand and can use this as well. Um, other things uh, which you can do once you have your uh, uh, transcription. Um, are a qualitative data analysis uh, and corpus analysis, computation and linguistics. Yes, you would say in the, says in the, in the Claren infrastructure, we have um, uh, tools for qualitative data analysis, but also in, 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 in linguistics, uh, of course, we do uh, quantitative uh, analyses as well, uh, typically also seen in corpus uh, analysis and computational uh, linguistics. Um, now, uh, within the Claren structure, we uh, work as a team in, um, in, in uh, and, and have um, collected uh, what we have made available and, and, and um, uh, can offer in uh, a website called Speech and Tech. And the tech and tools, you can find all kinds of uh, uh, tools and uh, technologies um, which can be relevant for further processing uh, the transcriptions uh, uh, of your audio data. Um, just to mention one, 
um, uh, topic modeling is a very interesting thing to find uh, a group of words, topics from a collection of documents that best represents the information in, in, in the collection. So with this, you can really single out the words that are relevant for certain topics and are used by uh, your subjects uh, uh, to uh, talk about certain uh, topics. Uh, and that can be very interesting to use such automatic analysis tools. Uh, but that's one uh, example only. If you go to the web website, uh, you can find several things when it comes to qualitative data analyses. Um, there are commercial uh, packages like Atlas DI, and I think uh, some of you will certainly be familiar with this. Uh, it's a very professional system um, uh, and can be used uh, very well uh, to this end. Uh, you can code your uh, transcription data and do uh, all kinds of uh, hierarchy, uh, for further up in the hierarchy analyses uh, and, and statistical uh, uh, relations between all kinds of codings uh, and annotations. Um, from another side, uh, going more to the uh, audio signal again, there's the Praat uh, uh, software from uh, our Dutch colleagues in Amsterdam. Um, and it uh, gives you all kinds of opportunity to um, uh, analyze the audio signal uh, and measure speech sounds. Um, it, 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 of course, it, it requires uh, some introduction and, and for using it, but it can be very handy for uh, finding out how uh, uh, for speech intelligibility, how well people articulate, um, if that's interesting information for you, but it will also show the pauses in the, in the signal and so on. Um, corpus analysis tools, um, uh, well, uh, what is open source is a uh, voyant uh, tools which you can use and they have all kinds of facilities to further analyze the text like word clouds that you can have collocations like um, uh, in which context do words typically occur uh, and that can be very uh, relevant of course and uh, voyant also has some initial um, uh, software to at least um, and make some topic modeling, which I uh, told you before, um, and that can be a first start in that direction. And, um, and of course, when it comes to more, say, sophisticated forms of uh, topic modeling using word embeddings yourself, word to vec uh, algorithms, um, uh, you can nicely resort to the colleagues uh, that, uh, that we have in, in the Clarion infrastructure to help you further with that, because there's lots and lots of experience with that. Um, another example uh, which can come in handy is uh, automatic summarization, uh, for which there are uh, text summarization machines as well. Um, um, and that can, of course, be well, well be used if you, if you have all these uh, transcriptions and um, um, have to single out the, uh, the important uh, stuff of it. Um, in Claren infrastructure, there are further options. Um, you have the Weblicht uh, surroundings uh, environment. You can search for Weblicht and there uh, have all kinds of tools to analyze your corpora. And there's a lot and lot available. Um, but for me, it would be very interesting to talk to you in the breakout rooms with you, also from the angle of uh, social sciences and working also in the, in the survey um, field, would uh, consider uh, relevant and important ways of uh, analyzing such data, which would really be uh, of uh, additional value to uh, uh, what you already uh, do and for which we can use uh, these uh, linguistic uh, analysis tools that I presented and for which there are even much more. So um, um, I would like to welcome you then in that breakout room. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. There's a question from Veronica. Um, pauses, volume, pitch variations are annotated automatically and are still manually. So um, when you use a speech recognition software, um, um, it can give you the transcription. 
but it can also give you more detailed information because the uh, uh, speech recognizer uh, can only uh, recognize your uh, speech when it knows where it is. So uh, apart from uh, the words that it finds, it also gives you the timestamps of where it found these words. And you can imagine that if, you, if it gives the timestamps of the words where they are, um, the, the um, space in between is the pause. Uh, so uh, when you have the output, in your transcriptions, uh, including the timestamps of the words, you also have the automatically, you have the uh, pauses inside. And um, the most recognizer recognizes word work on a phoneme basis, so individual speech sounds. So with a more enriched uh, transcription, you can also get these uh, speech sounds and also the places where the recognizer found these speech, found, uh, uh, speech sounds. Um, what a speech recognizer will not deliver is, is the pitch contour. Uh, so for that, uh, you would need a software like Prat, which I just introduced. It has very sophisticated algorithms to um, give these pitch uh, contours. Um, and then you can uh, use that as well. Um, yes, um, I will share this, uh, uh, the T chain. Uh, we have an additional question also by Roberta, I think. Yes. Um, Hi, good morning. Uh, good morning, Roberta. I, I didn't have the time to, to write everything down, so I'm doing this uh, orally. So I'm interested in, um, in, in the case uh, you have some, uh, in the automatic transcription, you find out that there are some uh, mistakes caused by, uh, for example, compound words or contracted words, and then you have to to adjust them. Would you um, would you do that manually, or um, or maybe automatically? Uh, this concerns the the alignment uh, the alignment part of the the transcription, the the automatic transcription. Yes, right. That's a very good question because this these are errors that speech recognizers typically made, uh, make. Uh, sometimes you're even lucky when it uh, uh, recognizes both components of a <laughs> component word, but then with the space in between, uh, but it has consequences. Um, so all component, component words uh, are sometimes difficult to recognize, that's the first thing, but once it has recognized them, you would like to glue them together, and there are automatic ways to do this, uh, but still you cannot count on uh, that it will do this uh, perfectly for all component uh, words that it uh, has found. Um, uh, and in the end, it also means that you have to do a realignment uh, because then uh, instead of two words with their own timestamps, you have one word with a timestamp. So you can use forced alignment to do that again. So there are uh, automatic tools to do that, uh, but it is of course language dependent. Uh, they still may miss out some component, uh, component words. Uh, and then you have to do a forced alignment again to resynchronize it with the audio signal. Um, so it can involve much um, uh, handwork, but it can be limited by using these automatic tools. Is that an answer to your question, Roberta? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, yeah. I was, uh, because I'm working in Italian, and the main problem is that the resources are uh, much more for English, but not for other languages. So yes. at the moment, um, yeah, I'm considering the this kind of resources, Italian also other languages different from uh, from English. So yeah, that's yeah. The, the main difficulty. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. sure, sure, sure. And we have the same problem in Dutch and in German. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. There is an um, additional question also by Konstantin about the, the identification of emotional states. Yeah, does the emotion identification software only provide one emotional state per audio file? Is able to take into account changes in the emotion state with one one audio file? That's a that's a good question, but it it, it typically takes a, a, an amount of uh, of audio of audio signal to find out what 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 is the uh, predominant um, uh, valence and arousal there. Um, but if you um, um, are able to uh, segment the file in, in various uh, parts, uh, because you already, already think that um, uh, a speaker is 
having this emotion there and there, then, then you can uh, segment the file. But otherwise, I think it will typically uh, take the file as a whole and uh, look into that. Um, I also see that Arjen van Hessen is here and he also knows more about this software. So perhaps he, he could add or add this in the breakout room or whatever. Um, so that's for the questions. Yes. Right. So we could now move to the breakout rooms. In the first breakout room held by Joris, we will discuss survey developer perspective. In the second one with Judith, a user's perspective. In the third with Hank, information extraction perspective. And that will be in the fourth with methodological and analytical insights.